So I'm getting my setup for my phytoplankton cultures. And the first step I need to do is get all the containers ready. I'm currently waiting on the water to kind of mix before I can continue. And I have the phytoplankton um, petri dishes ready. I'll show you those in a moment. So originally I was going to use a clear soda can, like everybody says, the two liter sodas. But what everybody says is beware of the dimples on the bottom because it can cause the culture to kind of settle and start dying a little bit. This is actually my second attempt. The first attempt failed horribly because I didn't, I tried to cheat my way through it and I didn't get through the exact processes of getting the petri dishes from Florida Aqua Farms like everybody suggests online. Um, I, I think that's going to be the defining factor on this. So I d discovered the problem with the round bottoms while I was, or with the dimpled bottoms while I was online researching all this because I want this to work this time. Uh, and so I looked in my refrigerator and I found that I had these containers which do not have dimples on the bottom. They're, there's a little bit of a rounding in the middle, but it's pretty much flat. And this is a 2 liter soda, and this is 1.75 liters, so almost the same quantity, a little bit less. Um, so I've decided I'm going to use these for my original cultures. Um, what I did was I cleaned them out real good, and I soaked them in vinegar and water. And uh, whenever I get ready, I'm going to rinse them real well, and we'll get there in a minute. Okay, so those containers are currently sitting and trying to sterilize. The main thing is try to keep everything as clean as possible. So if you have old tubing laying around, now is not the time to repurpose it. Everything needs to be as clean as possible because these cultures that you're going to do, you don't want them to be fighting other bacteria that's on your equipment. So the first time round, if you read the directions on the Florida Aquaform, petri dish it says to use sterile water and be as clean as possible so that you don't contaminate the culture uh, so for the first one I'm going to be very very sterile and then after I get a culture up and running then I might get a little more lax with it um, but I want to get a, a good one going first anyway so here's the containers and then I'm setting up so the main issue is getting the rigid airline tubing everybody says I didn't realize it was a special Tubing is not the stuff you put on your air pumps. This is flexible. See? They want rigid. So you actually have to order online specialty, or you can do what I did, which is I went to Home Depot and I measured what this flexible tubing would fit into and a good seal. And I came up with the 5 16th inch outside diameter with the 3 16th inside diameter. And I got it at Home Depot. And it's clear vinyl tubing. It's kind of hard. It's, it's not PVC hard, but it's a lot more firm. And I think it'll do a great job. And it was $4. And I went down to the local hardware store. I don't have to wait for it. Um, and while I was standing there, I asked some people about the clear PVC. And they said, um, absolutely have to order online. That they, they didn't have anything else besides this. So I think this is a great option for 4 bucks. And so I went ahead... And I got a drill bit and I went smaller than what you think you're going to need because you want this to be as airtight as possible so you don't get contaminated. Um, so for the big hole I did a one quarter inch drill bit, just a regular drill bit and a handheld drill. And then for the little hole I did um, 11 64th inch and then I widened just a little bit with the tool so I can get a very very tight seal on this. So what happened with my first culture was I noticed that I was having problems putting air into the culture because there was no escape for the air. And I don't notice anyone else talking about this when they're talking about their cultures online. Um, so I'm hoping this will fix it. If not, then I will just remove it and let it be open to air. But I placed one of those one-way valves that you can get for your air pump. And they're super cheap online. You can get like three for like two bucks or something. And I had a couple laying around, and I thought it might be a really good idea to, you know, since nothing's supposed to be able to enter it, but it'll be able to exit the pressure so we can keep the bubbling going. 
And if it doesn't work, then I'll just take this off and have it open so that the pressure can escape. Um, and then I just pushed this tubing through and this lid is actually ready to go and I'm going to stop and make the second lid because I'm going to do two cultures today. Okay, so I actually went to sleep and came back because these containers take a little bit longer than I expected for them to dry. So what I did with this container was, as you saw earlier, I soaked it in some water with just like a capful of vinegar to get all the residue out of it and I shook it real good and I let it sit. When I got done, I rinsed it, uh, I'd say at least eight times. You have to rinse it real well because vinegar is an acid, so you, you don't want that messing with your cultures. And so you rinse it real well, and what I did was I rinsed it until it no longer smelled like vinegar. It didn't have a smell at all. And I just, you know, kind of, just kind of smell over the top of it. You don't want to be rubbing your nose all in the container. And then when that's done, you take a very small amount of rubbing alcohol, just like you get from, just like you get from the um, Walgreens or CVS, and you just kind of pour just enough in there to where you can swish it around and get all the edges. You know, it's cheap stuff, so you know, a couple tablespoons. And I put the lid on it with all the tubing. And then swish it really, really, really well all over the lid, all over the tubing. You want to make sure you get all the surfaces so that it doesn't get... You want to make sure your culture is not contaminated with any kind of extra bacteria. So that's the... And then what I did was I hung the tubing so it wasn't touching anything. So it would dry as clean as possible. And then also the containers what took a while. And so once the alcohol dries off everything, it should be relatively sterile. Um... So it actually took several hours to dry. I wasn't kind of expecting that for the video. Normally alcohol is a very fast drying substance, but because it's in a container, it kind of took a little longer. Anyways, so the reason it looks wet is I, what I did was I made my culture medium while it was drying. So in a different container, the, the, um, Directions from the Florida Aqua Farms actually tells you what you can do is just boil some water. Because um, remember, we don't want any bacteria to be fighting our cultures in the in the first round. So you can actually boil water to make it sterile. So what I did was I got the water, I got sterile water, and then you take your regular sea salt mix that you use for your tank, and you get a little bit a regular baking soda. If you look on the side of it, it's sodium bicarbonate, just regular baking soda from the grocery store. Um, and so I got one liter total, and I got my sea salt mix, and I used my refractometer to get it to 1.2 specific gravity. Um, and it's not exactly what I keep my tank at, but that was a good roundabout number when I was looking through all of the info online. Um, and I also got my pH to be about where my tank is, and I keep mine about at 8. And I used my uh, refractometer and my test kit for my kit, for my tank, um, to achieve those results. And I made sure, you gotta make sure you, um, uh, mix it real well, shake the bottle real well, check the water, shake the bottle again, let it sit, come back. Uh, because you gotta realize that it has to finish mixing and becoming a homogenous solution. So, I let it sit and I checked it multiple times. I made sure I got the right thing. The reason you're doing this is because when you put it into your tank, you don't want the little phytoplankton to get shocked and die from the change in salinity or the change in pH. So, it's just a good safety step. And um, it specifically says that these can be cultured in salt water or fresh water. So, this is as clean as I can possibly get the medium. I took it and I poured it into this container. And I'm going to inoculate it with the discs. So here's the stuff from Florida Aqua Farms. This is the microalgae grow, which everyone seems to have great success with. It's specifically formulated in order to grow phytoplankton. It's, it, this was like eight bucks. It's a giant bottle. It'll probably last a very long time. Um, this whole kit was shipping and handling. I didn't use the kit. What I did was I bought... Um, you can buy a kit for like $13 or something. But what I did was I chose to get an extra algae disc instead so that I could make sure that my cultures are are very well inoculated. They're going to be thick. 
um, a lot of people only used half this disc. I'm going to put a whole disc into uh, 500 mLs and just let it sit in culture for a couple days. And then I'll add it to the full volume in a couple days once it gets a very good start. So it literally has the directions how to do this on the back of this bottle. Like, I don't know how much simpler in life you can get. Um, apparently all the research I did online was really kind of pointless. All I really needed to do was order a kit from Florida Aqua Farms that would have told me how to do it. Um, and then this is what the disc comes in. And it actually has very good directions on here also. Um, and it tells you how to... Here we go. At the very bottom, it tells you how to start the cultures. And it also comes... The, the disc comes with the sterile cotton tip applicator. So literally what you do is you take this disc and you put sterile water on it and you let it sit for 24 hours in moderate lighting. That's what the directions say. And you see how it's coming off? Okay, so mine's been sitting and I got the Q-tip and it just kind of, I'm lightly rubbing it and it's just coming right off the, the medium in the petrium dish and it's becoming this liquid. And so what I did what you do is you scrub it lightly and you turn it into this liquid and then uh, the best way that you can find possible you get it into your container I personally uh, was happy enough to have some access to just some sterile basic syringes and so I just pulled mine up a syringe and shot it in this is the first container that I did just shot it right in there didn't touch anything with it and this is ready to go to the bubbler so I'm going to finish the, the second one and then I'm going to take it to where I've already set up my light and my bubbler. So just to show you how easy this, I already scrubbed it. And look, I mean, it's just totally liquid medium now. So it just sucks right up in that syringe. And then just very carefully without containing it, everything. Just pour it right in. Okay, so here's my final setup. Um, unlike some people on the internet, I don't have a closet that's very large and just waiting to have phytoplankton cultures. And I don't have a temperature controlled garage. Um, so what I did was I made myself a little science box just like you did in the 8th grade for the science fair. Um, I actually used the box that I got some aquarium supplies in. And I cut off one side because you want to make sure that there's a place for the heat to escape. Uh, you don't you don't want to cook the cultures, you just want to make them bright. And I put some foil as a reflector on one side so we can get as much light to the cultures as possible. Um, got a little shop light, you can get it at Walmart for like 8 bucks or Home Depot. Um, and then the bulb in there, you need to make sure you get 6500 Kelvin, which I believe is cool white. And usually at Home Depot there is a light spectrum and it will tell you what Kelvin you need. Uh, it'll tell you the color of the light for the Kelvin that you're looking for. You need 6,500 Kelvin because you want it to grow. Um, and that's pretty much what the phytoplankton needs to grow. So I just stuck a bulb into the shop light. And then I'm going to use this box to kind of try and control my uh, photo period. So I have, it, I have it set on a timer. That it's going to be on for 16 hours a day. And then it's going to be off for the rest. That way... Um, that's what the most, that's what the internet mostly suggested, was to have a 16 hour on period. Um, and then I have, you know, most people have these little gangway valves just laying around if they have an aquarium. And I had a spare bubbler that came with, I don't know, it came with something that I bought that it wasn't strong enough for my tank. And so I just had a spare bubbler laying around that I grabbed. And uh, you don't need much bubbles, as you can see. Um, some people say a rolling bubble. So I'm going to, I have one slightly different to see which one does better. This one's a little faster than this one. So um, they say a rolling boil, but if you look online at the temper, at the cultures that are actually going already, that's about the speed they have it going. Um, and you got to make sure that you shake it, not, not vigorously, but just like kind of pick it up and swirl it a little bit every day so that the cultures that are settled to the bottom will move around. Um, and you notice I made sure that I got the tubing all the way to the bottom of the bottle so it'll um, circulate the water well. And um, also I made sure to label my bottles so I know what day I made them. And it's just a piece of tape. You can change it and replace it all you want to. 
I'm be so it is day four since I first set this up. And as you can see, the cultures are starting to get a lot darker than when we first started. Um, so normally you don't start splitting them until you get to day six. But my goal on this was to get an initial culture started and then to fill the container the rest of the way. So uh, I'm going to go ahead. I have a jug of water that I prepared. I have extra distilled water bottles laying around from where I put distilled water in the tank. Um, so I, what I did was I filled it up with the reverse osmosis water. And I went ahead and got my regular salt mix. And I'm, I'm trying to keep... Every time I make the water, I'm trying to keep it at 1.20 specific gravity. Uh, and so that's what I mix the water to. And between here and there, previous video, I uh, did some research. And some of the articles seem to think that the cultures would raise pHs by themselves. So I'm not going to pH adjust this. I'm just going to put in the salt water at the right specific gravity. And then when the cultures are done, and uh, I'm ready to split them. I'll check the pH of them and see where they're at. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill them up and we'll be restarting with day one from today and this will be, uh, it'll be considered my first round of full cultures. So here they are, I filled them up. Um, I left a, a little space at the top because you wanna make sure that when you think about it about once a day you need to come in here and just kind of swirl the bottle. You don't want to shake it aggressively. Just swirl it and get the sediment off the bottom of the bottle uh, so it'll get back into the solution. Um, and this is about the speed of the bubbles I've been having them go at and it seems to really like it about about this speed. Um, anyway, so that's it. This is my first set of uh, phytoplankton cultures. I'm going to say that this is pretty successful. Thanks.